Hey guys, Dino at Speed Circuit here, and today we're going to cover the things that I love about the ND Miata. First, I want to touch on the build quality. I think the textures and the materials are decent. You know, it's obviously not a high-end car, but it feels good and it looks good. And I think that's important. You know, just the little, little touches like the piano black trim and the red stitching and the faux carbon fiber and the faux leather, but it's nice, it's soft, it feels good. Uh, the buttons, you know, tend to have nice clicks to them and things like that. So it's a nice place to be um, and it's not gonna make you feel like you're driving a cheap car. Another great feature of the ND is the headlights. The HIDs are great. Uh, obviously, daylight isn't the best time to show that off see really far ahead. Uh, it's, they're nice and clear. They're a good color. It gets the job done well. It's got the buttresses in the back. Uh, it just it looks really good and uh, it looks a lot more expensive than it is. I really love the inputs on this car. Um, and by that I mean the things that you interface with while driving to actually move the car. I'm not talking about radio inputs or things like that. Just, just shifting. I mean, I could do it with a single finger. It's very positive. It has a lot of great feedback. It has a nice click to it. It has a great feel. Um, it's very mechanical and, and just tight. You know, there's not a lot of slop in the shifter. You can, you can see this is all stock. And it just shifts phenomenally. It's very smooth. The clutch is easy because it's so light. Um, it just feels good. It's a pleasure to shift. Um, and arguably, more than the shifter, I, I might even prefer the steering. Now, it's an electric rack and a lot of people have a problem with that. A lot of people complain about losing hydraulic racks and going to electric racks. But this one's a little different. A lot of electric racks are set up with the assist motor on the steering shaft, the steering column, uh, and I guess that gives it more of a video gamey feel, whereas the electronic motor is actually on the steering rack here, and it's just, it's superb. I mean, you touch the wheel and it just goes, it's got a nice tight ratio, um, you really kind of get down in there and love every second of it. It's very tight, it's very responsive, um, and it's just a joy to drive. I, there's not a minute that goes by in this car that I don't enjoy driving it. It's really a lot of fun. Another great thing about this motor is that it's high compression, it's got the Skyactiv motor in it, and it's really great with fuel economy. I mean, I'm getting 31 miles to the gallon, uh, and this is my long-term average, so this this includes me sitting there in a parking lot, not going anywhere, playing around with my phone, with the AC on, getting zero miles per gallon. Uh, it includes whatever speed I'm doing on the highway, which is always totally legal. And um, it includes me hooting on the car. And even with that, long term, I'm still looking at 31 miles to the gallon. That says a lot. I mean, it's one thing to get 31 miles to the gallon on the highway or on a selective trip when you're driving it easy, but to factor in everything and still get 31 miles to the gallon is insane. I mean, if I go right here, if I'm doing, say, 42 miles an hour in sixth gear, you can see my momentary uh, fuel economy is sitting, it's sitting at it's jumping around a little bit, but it's settling around 48.9 right now. Um, I'm doing about 41 miles an hour at the moment. Now it's 62.5, 49.4. So it'll jump around that range. But call it 50 miles to the gallon doing low 40s in sixth gear. That's really hard to beat. Now, this is an ND1, which means it has the older motor, the updated one that came out in 2019 is referred to as the ND2, it's the refresh. It's basically the same car, but most of the changes went into the motor, 
the newer motor has an extra, I don't know, 27 horsepower or so. This one's 150 something. And um, it doesn't sound like a lot. But for a car that's so light, these cars start at 2,300 pounds. I have the RF, so it's around 2,400 pounds. Um, and 150 something horsepower doesn't sound like much, but it really, uh, it's punchier than you think it is because it is so light. Your average car nowadays is you know, 3,700 pounds. Uh, and this uses a really high compression engine. So you can see me here at you know 2,800 RPM and I can get on it and it just starts going. It's very responsive. Um, I could be cruising along in say fifth gear um, doing 50 and I just touch it and it starts to go already. You know, that's pretty good. Um, no need for a downshift. It's, it's got a very flat torque curve and this, this motor has a lot of good character to it. Um, so the numbers are a little deceiving when it comes to this car. Uh, the ND1 is not a particularly fast car. It's, it's, it's definitely slower than it should be. But the ND2 is really punchy and makes a good difference. Um, however, at this point, they're not really tunable. So if you get an ND1, you can do some modifications to it. The header and a tune will bring you right up to the ND2 power level. So enough about me. What do you love about the ND Miata? Leave a comment below and let us know. Also, please like and subscribe to our channel because we're trying to grow and we can't do that without you. Also, check out speedcircuit.net to get parts for your ND Miata. Thanks for watching.